an exclusive club. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, been running around trying to get my generator going this morning and uh, a lot of other things. The lights have come on four times and gone off four times. They called me at 2 o'clock this morning and said, we have restored your power. I looked around, it was dark. I said, <laughs> man, wake you up and then tell you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, God is good. All the time. God is good. It's good to have you with us this morning. Uh, if we know of anybody that has any needs, uh, uh, or if you, if you know, if we can help anybody, please let us know. Uh, I was about to need it this morning, but uh, I finally got mine going. Got a few announcements this morning. Uh, continue to pray for revival. Sunday mornings over here at seven thirty. Are y'all, have y'all cut that back to 8 o'clock? Or Matt, are y'all still at 7.30? Do I? Still at 7.30. Uh, Super Bowl party this uh, February the 7th. Uh, taking some people to Kennedy home. Uh, first place for health. We've got the Agape Band, what the youth is doing on the 13th, Saturday the 13th. Uh, moms are praying. Read your bulletin. It's all good. Uh, all good. Very glad, good to have you. Uh, uh, people called me yesterday, won't know if we we're going to have church. You know, and if we're not going to have church, I put it on WRAL, and I try to get a, a, a voicemail out. I try to send out some uh, text, whatever. I try, I try to make you know. But otherwise, I don't. If I send out text and tell you we are going to have church, then I get all these phone calls. Well, when is it going to be? Is everything going to be the same way? Do, 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 And I don't mind answering questions, but it just takes up a lot of time. So I just, if you will, we will try to get in contact with you if we do not have uh, church services. But uh, otherwise, we, we, we have them. Uh, and if only two more, two or more show up, then we have them. Our praise team, thank you guys. They were here practicing last night. Uh, they couldn't do it Friday night, so they were here last night, and uh, a lady came up that needed a place to stay. <laughs> Y'all probably didn't even know about it. <laughs> uh, so anyway, long story. Praise the Lord, God is good. Let me be still for a minute and know him <laughs> and know the power of his resurrection. Oh, me. My head is still attached, is it not? Good. I thought it was a chicken for a minute. But <laughs> Let us pray. Oh. Lord God, I praise you, worship you, thank you for life. Lord, for the nation we live in and all the creature comforts we enjoy. <laughs> Lord, help us, help us to realize, Father, we are truly blessed like few other people on the face of this earth. And that we need to be willing to, to give and share what we have been so liberally, liberally blessed with. Lord, I, I pray for those today who might be having difficulty in the cold. And pray that you will sustain them and strengthen them and, and take care of them all, Father. I pray for those today who are having it bad emotionally. Lord, who are having spiritual problems have other needs other than physical and I pray Father that you would heal I pray Father that we would all turn back to you and realize that you are the source of every good and perfect gift that we need you more than we've ever needed you I pray that we would quit playing games and realize that you have called us here to make disciples to pray to seek your face everything we do here Father, is in preparation for what is to come. There are two directions for people, eternal damnation or eternal life. And we need to be telling them. We need to be the watch people, the people who warn, the people who love and encourage, the people who forgive and have compassion. Help us to be that, that person. I fail so often. Lord, I pray this morning 
as we begin this time to worship, that you will covenant with us, that you will tabernacle with us. Your word tells, where two, tells us where two or more are gathered in your name, you are in our midst. Your word also says that you dwell, you inhabit, you tabernacle among the praises and the worship of your people. So, Father, I pray today as we get ready to sing, Father, that you will, you will tabernacle with us. You will touch hearts. You will help us to know the things that are, that are not pleasing to you and the things that we're doing right. Encourage us where we need encouragement, Lord, and convict us where we need conviction. Oh, Lord God, send your Holy Spirit. We can't do a thing without you. I love you. Forgive me for not loving you as much as I should with all my heart, mind, soul, and strength. But Lord, I do. I want to love you more. I want to walk with you more intimately. I just want you to use me. Like Paul said, till I'm poured out as a drink offering. Oh, Father God, we worship you now. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise your holy name. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. If you're able, please stand with us and let's sing our praises to God. Let him take control of your life and your heart now. Hallelujah. This is a newer song, but uh, we definitely get an opportunity to learn it because it repeats a lot of the words over and over again. And uh, we heard it last, uh, last week at Special Music. Uh, again, just emphasizing the word majesty uh, in relation to our Lord and Savior, majestic.
tell you, it seemed like here recently many of us were wondering if we had everything we needed to be able to survive and live, and uh, we've got everything we need to be able to thrive, and that's Jesus. So uh, let's lift him up with enough.
worship God through our tithes and offerings and through our care ministry. And uh, as you would, take one of the care cards this morning, fill it out. Good to have you all here. Uh, let's worship God through our money, through our giving, through our uh, serving one another, through the care ministry. Let us pray. Keep your day Sabbath and holy, Father. Father, as we come today, just want to thank you for your love and your grace to us. Thank you for an opportunity to come to a building that's got heat and light, although to worship you we don't need either. We just need to know that in our hearts that if we lay it all at your feet that you'll take care of us, Father. For those that are less fortunate, that are perhaps in don't have power or those that are stranded on the highways across this nation from this weather storm. We just pray for them that you'll watch over them, Father. For those that aren't here in our membership, that um, maybe the roads just aren't where they can get out or traveling, Father, we just pray that you'll be with them. For those that are on our prayer list, on the care card list, Father, thank you for watching over us and just continue to be with us, Father. Now, as we give you our offerings and our tithes, Father, just thank you for what we have and forgive us of our complacency. You know, we, we come in and we turn the thermostat up and the heat comes on or the air conditioning comes on, Father, but um, we should take, take the things that you give us for granted. There's a lot of things that you do for us day in and day out that we don't see that we just praise you and, and worship for everything you do, Father. And we, Father, open our hearts and our minds to the passage today that George brings to us and just take George and hide it behind the cross because it's your word, Father. It's, it's, it's your revival in our hearts that we're seeking. It's going to change this nation and help us to, to grow forward, move forward and grow. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for your son who made the ultimate sacrifice to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let us see. Special music this morning is called Sinking Deep. Um, when I first saw the title, I was thinking, well, that's kind of depressing. <laughs> At first, because you know, anything about sinking is not normally a, a positive thing, but uh, in this song, it's talking about just sort of giving it all up and not worrying about anything other than uh, Jesus as your one desire. So, um, sinking deep. Your face is all I seek, you are my end. 
Children's, children's, children, <laughs> whatever your appellation is, you may go to the left, my left, your right. Right. Uh, something I didn't mention a few minutes ago, you know, whenever we have church and people, there's ice and stuff out, if if you know of anybody, if anybody's asking you whether they should come or not, or you're thinking, if, if you think it's unsafe, don't come. I mean, I, I don't want anybody to come and get hurt. But if you're one of those people like me, you just get cabin fever. You can't stay in but so long. you got to get out and come on to church. Uh, if, if I, I, mean, I was out a dozen times yesterday, right? I came to the church three times, I think, going back and forth. So uh, if you're like that, hey, come on to church. Uh, Continuing in a, a study that I'm doing uh, uh, through the books of the Bible, I don't know if I'm going to go through all of them or not, I've been reading uh, Billy Graham's book, uh, the last book he's written, uh, and this morning we're going to be look at, looking at Leviticus and Numbers, and those are two books in the Bible that are very interesting. Leviticus has a lot of the laws, the food laws, and the uh, priest laws, the, the, the uh, rituals that the priests are to do, and how the People are to bring their sacrifices to the priest uh, and, and numbers, uh, and it's about the festivals that they are, you know, the Feast of the Passover and the uh, Feast of Tabernacles and all those feasts uh, in, in Leviticus. And then numbers is, is pretty much about the first part of the book about the children of, of Israel uh, rebelling against God and, you know, going and, and to the to, to the promised land and seeing the giants and refusing to go in and conquer the land. And then they wander in the wilderness uh, area for 40 years. Uh, and, and there are a lot of laws there too. So that, that's basically the, the setting of those. The children of Israel uh, have been delivered from slavery in Egypt in the book of Exodus. And now Leviticus and Numbers, they are in the wilderness area in the Sinai Peninsula. And they are getting the laws straightened out and refining everything, if you will. Uh, and so there's a lot of talk about blood. So that's the emphasis of our uh, sermon this morning, the everlasting gift of blood. The Bible says, we'll read a passage in a few minutes, the life is in the blood. How many of you believe that the life is in the blood? Yeah, if, and don't do this, but, you know, <laughs> just if you cut your, a part of your body and the blood runs out, you die. Uh, and I think we all know that. So the life is in the blood. It, it's, 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 it's amazing what the blood does. Uh, it, 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 it cleanses your body in a sense. And this is one of the amazing things about Scripture to me. I mean, how many of you have ever had a red, a white garment and, and got spilled blood on it? You got a problem. 
And you got to get it out with cold water. You got to take extra care to get that blood out. The blood stains your garment. So how in the world would people get the idea that blood cleanses you? And I think that's, that's God. God revealed that uh, to people many, many thousands of years ago, that, that blood cleanses. And it does. Not the blood itself. It does in a sense. I'll talk about that in a minute. But your blood goes through your body and, and gets the oxygen from your lungs and, and the nutrients uh, from, from eating. And then it goes throughout your body to all those little capillaries and all those little vessels. And it takes food and it takes oxygen. Your body's like a machine. It needs, it needs fuel. So that food and that oxygen is what keeps you going. And then the, it has a dual capacity. It takes all the waste when it gets down there into those little capillaries and everything. So it gets all the waste products and, and pulls it out through your kidneys. And your kidneys scrub it and clean it and, and get the blood clean again. And then the blood goes back through. So in a sense, the blood is cleansing your body. Uh, it, it's, it's taking out the impurities. And, and so it, it, it cleanses. Uh, it's just an amazing thing to me. And then the clotting factor in blood. Uh, if, if, if you cut yourself, there are these agents that come in, and, and I don't know what they're all called, but, but they clot the blood, so it stops flowing. Uh, and so if you can hold, it, hold, 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 hold something on it long enough, it'll eventually clot unless it's too big a wound. Uh, and so, but, but why doesn't it clot all the time? If it clotted all the time, it wouldn't go through your body. You know, and it would just clog up your body and your arteries. I guess that's what you do when you get... Uh, uh, what's that stuff you get, plaque and all that mess? Uh, you know, you clog up your arteries, fat, <laughs> stuff like that gets in your blood. Uh, so, so it's amazing. I mean, just the, the whole thing, you know, I, I don't know how anybody can believe. And then the heart is a pump. And it pumps. I didn't look all this up. My computer was down for a while. Uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of gallons, you know, all the time, just pumping, 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 pumping. I, it's amazing. No machine we've ever built is like, like the human heart. God made it. It's neat. And I think I always think of Romans 1.20 where the Bible says, Paul says that the invisible attributes of God are clearly seen. You can't see God, you know, but his attributes, his, his abilities, his strength, his wisdom uh, are seen in his creation. Uh, and I see that uh, in the blood that he created. But blood also has a spiritual effect. Uh, the, the heart, uh, the cleansing of, 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 of the blood, blood, blood of God cleanses us, the Bible says, from all sin. And so it has a spiritual, uh, the blood atones for our sins. The blood redeems us. It purchases Jesus' uh, death on the cross. And as we're going to read in a minute, those animals' sacrificial blood uh, cleansed us, bought us back, redeemed us in a sense, uh, to be with God and, and to be reconciled to God and be one with God. Most social ills are caused by heart problems, problems with our heart. Billy Graham said, our future is threatened by many dangers, but they all stem from the heart. Uh, you could solve all the problems of the world if you could get rid of the, the heart problems of hate and lust and greed and prejudice. You know, and, and, and pride, it would be a lot better world. Most civilizations in history have fallen because of, 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 of internal problems. Uh, they've fallen from within. Uh, most often, they're not conquered. They, they begin to decay, and maybe eventually enemies come in and take them over. But it's because the, the, the country has lost its moral, uh, its moral direction, its moral purpose and uh, you see it in Rome and you see it in all other uh, empires and I think we're seeing it in the United States today we're losing our moral compass and we're beginning to fall and, and uh, you're going to see it in the economy, you see it in the school system, you see it in government you see it in the military, you see it everywhere as we turn away from God and we become a more immoral people we, we begin to fall Theodore Roosevelt, the former president of the United States says when you educate a man in uh, when you educate a man in mind and not in morals you educate a menace to society when you educate a man in mind and not in morals you 
educate a menace to society. And I think that's another uh, uh, symptom of our society today. We're educating people. We've taken God out. We've taken the morality out. And so people have all this uh, wisdom, you know. And so we, we, we're, we're going to do, we're going to clone things. We're going to do all kinds of things. We're, we're, we're going to make a whole lot of messes and a whole lot of problems uh, in our lives. <clears throat> The Bible tells us that the human heart is corrupt, but uh, God came to give us new hearts and, and to transform us. Uh, one of the uh, words that many of the chapters in Numbers and Leviticus begin with is, is as the Lord spoke. The Lord was speaking to Moses. He was speaking to the children of Israel and to, trying to tell them what they needed to do. And so on just about every chapter begins or every other chapter, begins with these words. And the Lord spoke. Well, I want to tell you, I believe the Lord is speaking today. He's speaking to us through prophets. He's speaking to us through preachers. He's speaking to us uh, through the word of God. He's speaking to us with all the stuff that's going bad and all the terrible things that are happening. He's trying uh, to get our attention. I don't think there's any lack of warning from him. Uh, the children of, of Israel, when God would speak and Moses would get them aside and say, now, you've got to obey these laws, they always said, yeah, yeah, we're going to obey them. You know we're going to obey them. Well, did they obey them? No. They're just like us. They, 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 they fall. They, they sort of want to do it, but they can't do it uh, all the time, or, or as they should. And many times they uh, have a lot of problems. So God knows that. God knows they can't do it. And so... God knows that they're going to be unholy people. He's calling them to be holy people. He's calling them, calling us to be like him, to be perfect, to, to love and, and to forgive and, and to not have hate and not to do immoral things. But he knows we're going to fail up, fail. And so uh, from the beginning, uh, God sets up a tabernacle, a place where the children of Israel can go and, and meet with him. And uh, he sets up a system of blood sacrifices where they can go and, and get forgiveness for their sins so they can feel better. How many of you feel better when you confess your sins to somebody and, and, and they forgive you? Just getting it out, you know, it can make you feel so much better. Just telling uh, others what you've done wrong. Uh, I'm dealing with uh, several people right now, and myself included. As I'm dealing with them, I'm beginning to have the light of God exposed in my own life. And I'm seeing all these little things that are just not right in my life. And when I confess it, it's like, wow. When I, when, you know, confessing is, in, 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 in the scriptures, there's a word that, for confession that means to say the same thing as, to say the same thing as God, to acknowledge that what I'm doing is wrong or what I'm not doing is wrong. And that is liberating. It, it frees you to, to know it and to fess up to to understand what the problem is and to acknowledge it. But these blood sacrifices, if you read through, how many of you read through Leviticus and Numbers a time or two? It can be exciting, exhilarating reading. <laughs> yeah. uh, if you're interested in blood, it, it might be. But, uh, it, it's, it's tedious. And, 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 they're, and they're sacrificial system, and they got all these different sacrifices and it, it can be really tedious and it's demanding, you know, to sacrifice. They were sacrificing animals all the time, every day of the week, uh, frequently. It, it was costly. It, it was a lot of labor involved. It was labor intensive to do the sacrifices. Well, why all this emphasis on the blood? Well, Leviticus 17, 11 says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it. To you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. Atonement is a very fancy word, but it means you, you get basically uh, restored to right relationship with God. But, but if you break that word down, it's at one mint. <laughs> you become at one with God when you confess your sins and, and, and the blood of Christ uh, and the blood, uh, the blood sanctifies us and, and, and the blood atones for our sins. It makes us at one with God. Uh, th this life-giving blood of these animals is a symbol of, of a much deeper spiritual thing, as I was saying. Sin is horrible. Sin is terrible. 
It's unacceptable to God. God has never sinned. Jesus never sinned. And we can't seem to get sin out of our lives. But we need to understand with all the grace and all the mercy and all the love of God and the fact that God made animal sacrifices a way that we could have our sins forgiven and ultimately through Jesus Christ have our sins forgiven once for all and all this tedious, laborious uh, exacting of life, having to kill all these animals was, was to show us how terrible sin is. And I think today, Christians... We, 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 we love to focus on the love and the mercy of God. And, and we don't want to look at the horribleness of our sin. I, I'm, I'm, my daughter Mary was at Wake the other day and she was working with a patient. And the patient started talking about God. So Mary was talking about the God back to her. And uh, the woman was talking about how her pastor had called her up before her surgery. And uh, was, was giving, her, giving her a verse out of the Bible and, and all this stuff. And they were going back and forth and back and forth. And, and then, then, then Mary finds out this woman is living in immorality. She's living in sin. She has an, a, an immoral relationship with another woman. And I see that all the time. I see people committing adultery. And then talking about how they love God. I see, see people with unforgiveness and bitterness in their lives and say they're a Christian and then talk about how God loves them and how God, God does love us. But sin is a horrible thing. And Jesus, who knew no sin, came and died on a cross for your and my sin. He suffered excruciatingly. So we don't need to take sin lightly. Uh, we, need to, we need to know about the grace and the mercy of God. I couldn't live with myself if I didn't know God died for my sins and he loves me and he, he died unconditionally for my sins. He, he doesn't require anything of me except just to believe and to trust in him and, 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 and to seek to obey his, his word. But, but he does all the work for me. But I don't need to take it lightly when I sin and just say, well, that's just the way I am. God, you're going to have to take me. Imagine standing before God Almighty at his throne and saying, okay, God, that's the way I am. Thank you for letting me come to heaven, but I'm going to keep on doing the same way I've always done. You know, that's the way you made me. It's your fault, God. I don't know. I think there are a lot of people, folks, who are going to hell who are sitting in church pews or chairs. Because we're doing one thing and worshiping God with our lips, but not with our actions. And that shows me the love of God's not inside of us. And I'm not here to condemn anybody. I need to, I need to get the beam out of my own eye before I help you get the speck out of your own eye. But I tell you, you got a speck. And I need to look at myself and look at you with compassion and love. But I also need to be able to tell you, don't mess around with this sin stuff. There are consequences for disobedience. God's called us to be holy. Numbers, God says, but if you do not do so, if you do not obey God's commandments, then take note, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. You, you, you can't have Christ and be disobedient. You know what I've been praying lately? I've been praying. I'm going back through praying through my deacon's list, and I'm praying for everybody in the church. I'm only on my first deacon right now, so you don't have to sweat it too much right now, most of you. But I am praying for God to bring the truth out in your life. I'm praying for God to reveal your sin to you. And if you don't get it, I'm praying for God to reveal it to other people. I don't want you to live in darkness. I want you, and I'm praying the same thing for myself. And I pray for my family just about every day. And, and I'm praying for them the, the, the same way. I'm praying for them the same way that God would glorify his name in their lives. Your sin will find that out. And I think too many people are going to die in unrepentant sin. The laws are not only for God's people. They're for everybody. 
uh, in, in the book of Numbers, it says one ordinance, one law shall be for you of the assembly and for the stranger who deals with you and ordinance forever throughout your generations as you are so the stranger be uh, so that so the stranger be before the Lord and what he's saying here is not only for the for the Israelites that they're going to need to obey the laws it's for the people that are come in contact with the Israelites and live there with them and I, and I think about you and me as Christians we need to obey the laws but we need to tell other people you need to obey the laws the laws of God. We, we need to warn people. We need to be the watchman. We need some boldness to tell people you're sinning and you're going to hell. And we're afraid to do this. We're so afraid to, to, to tell others. And listen, do it, do it with compassion. Do it with mercy. Uh, do it. Get the, get the mode out of, beam out of your own eye first. But We've got to be telling people in the world today, you, you can't live this way, that you're doing totally against the, the, the laws of God and expect God to love you. That's not the kind of God everybody is. Everybody must be atoned for by blood. The good news is there are no more animal sacrifices. We don't have to precisely follow those rituals anymore. It talks about Jesus, this man, Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, he died on the cross. He sat down at the right hand of God. And from that time, waiting till his enemies are made his footstool. For by one offering, he has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. We're saved by grace through faith. It's nothing that we have done. Christ died for our sins and his blood atones. His blood pays for our sins. When we read Leviticus and we read Numbers and we're laboring through the reading and, and you've got to present the animal this way and you've got to have a dove for this one and a, and a goat for that one and a lamb for that one and a bull for that one and the high priest has to put on all his clothing and you've got to prepare yourself and you've got to declare the Sabbath, a, a Sabbath day and make it holy and you've got to wash yourselves and you've got to have purification. You know what the good news is? The good news is we don't have to do that anymore. Jesus. One sacrifice has done it for us. I mean, when you read the book of Numbers and the book of Leviticus, you ought to just say, Hallelujah! Thank you, God, that we live on this side. You know, the prophets Isaiah and Ezekiel and, and Daniel, and they all look for the day that we're living in. Not because we got air conditioning, not because we got central heat, but because we got the blood of Jesus. And, 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 and we don't have to keep sacrificing animals. Jesus paid it all. Christianity and, and, and Judaism are bloody religions. A lot of people don't like that, but uh, it's like the Red Cross has a little sign that says, give the gift of blood. You know, we know how important blood is, how precious blood is, and God knows that. I, I don't know what else God could have used to, to, to purchase our sins. Breath is important. Breath is really important. Stop breathing, you know, and guess what? You die, but how can you give breath as a sacrifice? I mean, it's, it's sort of intangible, you know? <laughs> but blood, I think blood is, is, is the most precious thing. It's more precious than gold that we could give to show our, our repentance and our sorrow for our sin. You know, if you've ever had a blood transfusion, or you ever known someone, you know, I give blood often. I haven't done it as regularly lately as I used to. But I, I don't know how many gallons of blood I've given. But you know, when I started giving blood, my mama was, was hemorrhaging and she needed blood. And it dawned on me how important it is that people give blood. Where would we be today if people didn't give blood? So, so blood is precious. But it also not only sustains physical life, but blood gives us eternal life. Christ, Christ's blood gives and sustains life. In several ways, it redeems us. We're redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. 1 Peter 1, it's more precious than gold. 
Redeem means you're, you're enslaved. You're enslaved to sin. You're in bondage to, 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 to uh, Satan. And you're headed on the road to hell. And uh, the blood of Jesus comes along and you receive his blood for salvation. And, and he redeems you. He buys you back, if you will. It's like you're in slavery to sin and he buys you back. He sets you free. I've never been in slavery, but I think, boy, what a great thing it would be to be set free. One day the master comes in and says, son, you're free. Go. And that's what God does with us. And that's what he's done with my guilt, you know. God God still convicts my conscience, but I don't have to live in in guilt incessantly because I can cry out and thank you, Jesus, for your blood that cleanses me. He's redeemed me. He's purchased me. I'm a child of God. He cleanses. The blood cleanses us. It says it cleanses us from all sin. <laughs> you know, blood is an amazing thing. You tie a tourniquet around your arm, <clears throat> and the blood quits flowing in your arm, and your blood starts turning purple, and it starts turning dark purple. After a while, it'll turn black. <laughs> After a while, you have to cut it off. You know, the blood is cleansing without what that reason it's turning black is your body's still working, the little engine's working. But but it's like you've closed the, the doors to the garage and now all the smoke's building up and all the impurities and and and, and so you're gonna die. And and so your arm's gonna die because it can't get rid of the impurities. I am told, I don't know, but I, I read this, that if you take unrefined sugar, I guess that's not that white stuff we buy. You know, down at Food Line or Piggly Wiggly. But if you take unrefined sugar and dip it in animal blood, it will bleach it. It'll turn it white. I don't know. Don't go home and try that necessarily. But, uh, you know, isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? The blood cleanses. Justifies. The blood justifies. Christ died for us and and justifies uh, us by his blood. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He justified righteousness when we believe on Jesus and believe on the efficacy or the effectiveness of his blood. The Bible says that that, that we're justified. We're made right. God is totally pure. He's totally right. He's totally righteous. He's totally just. And when we believe on on, on Jesus and his crucifixion, then when we believe, he says, that righteousness of God is imputed to us. It becomes our own. Kind of neat, kind of neat. Christ's blood gives and sustains life. It reconciles us. It pleased the Father by him to reconcile all things, making peace through the blood of his cross, as the rest of that uh, uh, verse. Reconcile means, means to be friends, to, to make peace, to be friends with God. Jesus says, I no longer call you servants, talking to his disciples in John I call you my friends. You can be a friend with God. You can walk with him. You can talk with him because the blood reconciles you. It provides access. <clears throat> Having boldness to enter the holiest by the blood of Jesus, let us draw near with a true heart. You no longer need priests. <laughs> we all are priests. Man, I love that. I love that. Because you don't have to come to me. You know? We need to confess our sins one another, but it doesn't say you've got to confess your sins to George. You don't have to confess, confess, confess your sins to the senior pastor. Confess your sins to one another. Confess your sins to God. In fact, you have immediate access to the throne room of God. I'm dealing with some people right now and, 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 and their issues, and they've sinned against people, and, 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 and they don't see their sin. They're, they're living in darkness, and I'm praying and I'm talking with the people who, 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 who have been affected and hurt. And, and I'm saying, we need to pray for that person's salvation. Because when they get saved, then they'll treat you right. But they're not going to treat you right till they get saved. they got to have a transformation. They don't see their sin. They're living in blindness. They're living in darkness. And they're trying to blame everybody else in the world for their problems. We all fit in that category a little bit. And what you need is, is Jesus. You need the blood. You need transformation of your heart. Then, then you can change. Too often, we try to change by our own selves. So, you know, that's why we make those New Year's resolutions. 
I'm going to do better this year. And we fail most of the time. Miserably, because we're trying to do it ourselves. We need a heart transformation. And only God can give us that. He provides access. We're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, Second Peter says. We're a special people. I love the King James. We're a peculiar people. We're a special people who are called that, uh, out of darkness into his marvelous light that we, we should proclaim the, his praises. And so, man, uh, we, 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 through the blood of, just take these verses in the Bible and believe them. You can enter the throne room of God. Don't let Satan convict you and lie and destroy you and say you're not worthy and you can't go before God through the blood of Christ. If you're a Christian and you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, you have direct access to the throne room of God and you can cry out to him day and night. Night and day. Christ's blood brings fellowship. You have been bought, brought near by the precious blood of Christ. He's, we, we can know him. We can, uh, fel- the word fellowship means to share everything in common, to, to have a, a relationship with someone where you know each other's deepest thoughts and intimate secrets, and uh, it's that kind of thing, and you can have that with God through the blood of Jesus, and it brings protection. If God is for us, who can be against us? He who would not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. Won't he protect you? Later on in that same passage in Romans 8, it says nothing can separate you from the love of God. Nothing. Nothing's been created. No living thing. No, no, no worldly thing. Nothing. Satan himself. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. I'm telling you, that is an awesome thing. <laughs> You know, I, I struggle at times with, with myself. And this, this, this morning and yesterday, I don't know if I was so consumed with, with, the, with whatever it was, the freezing rain and, and getting and then coming to church and I was trying to send out emails and I was trying to get my, my, my generator going and I don't know, trying to tell people how they needed to cut down trees and so they could clear off the trees on my road. So <laughs> I was just consumed with all this stuff. You know, and I didn't pray. I didn't pray like I should. I prayed. I prayed, but I didn't, I didn't spend a long time praying last night. I just realized. And then this morning, I get out there messing with that generator again. And uh, I didn't pray like I should. And, 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 and I feel guilty about that. But then you know what? You know what? I take these verses to heart. This is what Jesus died for. I shouldn't glory in my sin and say, wow, that's the way I am. You know I was busy today. God didn't have quite have time for you. God's saying, if you'd have just prayed a little bit, you wouldn't have been so busy. You know? <laughs> I struggle with my sin, but hey, I know the word of God. Nothing's going to separate me from him. He loves me. When you're bought by God, you're bought. You're saved. Well, you know you're saved is, is, is you've got God in your heart. I mean, you live, is, and, and, and when you sin, you, you don't like it. Gift of blood is, is everlasting, everlasting life. John 6 says, whoever, Jesus says, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. I know we do this thing here with communion, but really that's grape juice and some wafers. Now, if you're Catholic, you might believe it becomes the real blood of Christ and, and, the, and, the, and the body of Christ. I, I, don't, I don't buy into that one. So, so, so this, this passage used to give me great concern. I don't know about you. How can you eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood? How, how can you eat Jesus' flesh and drink his blood. And I hadn't been a Christian long, a few years, and I, I, I would read that passage, and I'd go, well, how do you do that? I don't know. And then I read John 1.14 one day. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. And I used those mathematical computation skills that my algebra teacher taught me. If A equals B and B equals C. (laughs) And I realized, I eat his word. 
I consume his word. I read John, and I read Matthew, and I read Mark, and, and, and I read Luke, and I read Genesis, and I read Exodus, and, and I eat his word, and I begin to know his word, and I hide it in my heart, and I let it be a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And so when I walk out, I'm so full of God's word, and the spirit of God is on me that, that, that I do the things I should do, and I know what I shouldn't do, and I trust in him because of his word. Hey, I've been preaching all morning out of the Bible. It's important. It's what gives me strength. It's a life-giving source, and we need to eat it. We need to drink it like a thirsty, hungry person would. And we need to pray, pray, pray. That's how you, that's how you eat the, the flesh of Jesus and drink his blood. You, you, you study his word. You study what he told you. That word is living. It's powerful. It's sharper than a two-edged sword, and you eat it. Because my... Oh, there's somebody in my wife's family the other day. He started going back to church, and he came in and said, I don't like this church. She said, why? She said, the pastor told me I need to re read my Bible every day. Duh. I mean, you know, that's, that's where we are in the church. They think this pastor has lost his marbles. He told me to read the Bible every day. Man said, that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> How else are you going to know God? Eat it, drink it, pray, pray, pray. Hebrews 9, 12, with his own blood, he entered the most holy place once for all, having obtained eternal redemption. By his blood, it's the only way for you. I don't understand it all, but I know this, blood does clean. And there has to be a sacrifice for sin and no amount of gold, gold or silver or any precious commodity can pay for that sin. It takes something much more precious and it's blood. And it's not the blood of animals and goats. It's the blood of God made flesh. It's the only blood that'll say. And you and I need to believe it and receive it we need to drink it. We're going to sing All Who Are Thirsty. That's our invitation hymn. All Who Are Thirsty. I hope we're all thirsty this morning. Jesus said, come, eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, <laughs> don't really understand what I'm talking about, it takes the Holy Spirit to convict you, so if you're beginning to understand something, you're beginning to feel a knot inside you or a lump in your throat or whatever it is, uh, that's God. That's the Holy Spirit. It's not me. It's not indigestion, most likely. It's God. And uh, you, just, you just cry out. You just, help me. Save me. I believe. I surrender. So, now's the time to come if you're thirsty. Let's come to the Lord. We all should be thirsty. Plant and if you're able, and let's sing together. <coughs> the invitation is uh, the power of your love. Sorry, we changed it because of the snow.
Spirit leads me on in the power of your 